I have a fairly different kind of presentation. I'm talking about something that I've uh, thought about for a long time, but have sort of stumbled into with some new projects that I've been getting into, and it's forcing me to think about something that I haven't really thought about. So what I'm going to talk about is relatively exploratory, but I think it's an important set of issues um, that, uh, that we're going to have to deal with in, uh, for, for people who work in the development assistance industry. So uh, what, uh, what, I'm, what I wanted to uh, uh, think about tonight is in the support of public sector reform in the development assistance industry, do we need more collaboration or more competition? The, uh, starting off with a few basic things on uh, development assistance, it is a pretty large uh, sector. The traditional development assistance, the OECD uh, Development Assistance Committee, if we go back to the 1950s, there was about $2 billion in development assistance. And now the latest numbers are in the vicinity of $150 billion. And with all that money going into it, the results are quite mixed. And we actually uh, can't really be sure about the results in, in a lot of areas. But I, I am, I'm thinking that the general sense that, that people who work in this industry have is that given the amount of resources invested, it's really not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, a second thing is that public sector reform uh, getting into making government systems work, public financial management, civil service reform, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the things that are involved in the delivery of services in sectors and so forth, is a tough thing to really make work in, uh, in environments where uh, there's a lot of weaknesses in the, in the system. And so think, looking at public sector reform, it's a lot harder to measure progress than it is as uh, compared to whether you build infrastructure. A third thing is that there are a lot of actors coming into the system now. Uh, some of the countries that used to receive development assistance, uh, Brazil, India, uh, China, and so forth, big foundations like the Gates Foundation uh, and uh, specific funds that focus on climate change and things like that. There's a lot of new actors who are in this development space. Now, uh, one of the questions that uh, we have to think about is why are the results from uh, this investment in public sector reform uh, not working that well? And one of the traditional arguments is that it's the systemic weaknesses of the countries that uh, they just don't have the, the capacity, there isn't the political will, the governance isn't there. But one of the really big things that we've seen uh, in the last uh, decade and a half, two decades, is this focus on, it's actually the development industry actors themselves. They are, uh, the, the funding is uh, insufficient, it's unreliable, it's politicized. They're creating incentives for the recipient countries to uh, act uh, as dependents rather than, uh, than incentives for them uh, to behave on their, on their own behalf. There's uh, problematic donor govern governance. And the reason I have this one, aid fragmentation uh, collaboration, one of the things that's always been pointed out about development assistance uh, is that there isn't enough collaboration. This is something that, that people complain about. And we're not doing enough evaluation and understanding um, the, the results. So the traditional actors have had to respond to both the changing landscape, the uh, entry of, of new actors, and all the criticisms. And they've made a lot of changes that I can't go, go into here. But they've tried to base what they're doing around these uh, aid effectiveness principles, that what the donor should do should be driven by what the recipient countries want, ownership. They should align with what the countries uh, do. And again, the collaboration thing. They should harmonize. They should, they should not do all kinds of different things. They should work in a way that is in the best interest of the country and helps the country to do what it needs to do. And they have to focus on results and hold each other uh, accountable. But in more recent years, people have been questioning this business about harmonization and saying, no, 
The problem is that they're too harmonized. They're, they're, they're like collaborators. They're like uh, oligopolists. And what we need is more competition. And so that's my, my question here. Do we need more uh, collaboration or more competition? So it's a bit of a messy uh, landscape. Collaboration can be constructive if it is focused well on what's happening um, in, a, in a particular country, and it's, there's enough experimentation. One of the concerns about collaboration is that if there's not experimentation, it becomes standardized and, uh, and, and so forth, and that it's driven by the recipient countries and, and also guided by evidence. So we're actually looking at what's happening and saying, this is working, this is not. But, Collaboration can also be very problematic. If you get a bunch of donors who are coming in and saying, you need to do this to fix your, your government um, systems, and they're not really contextualizing it properly, they're not driven by evidence, they could well be stifling competition and pushing a very standardized model that doesn't work in a, in a particular country. But the other, si the other side of, of this is that uh, the, the other uh, angle on this is that sometimes the collaboration is kind of fake. It's like you, uh, you do what you're going to do and I won't give you a hard time and I'm going to do what I'm going to do and you don't give me a hard time. And so this, they're, they're sitting, um, they're, collab they're, they're coordinating what they do, but they're not really collaborating. And, um, and this means that they're not... Uh, building a coherent system. They're each doing their, their own thing. And on the competition side, competition can help if it pushes the traditional actors to perform better, to do things that they, that they weren't uh, uh, doing before. And if there's a set of framework, uh, of principles and a framework, this is not a market. The idea that the competition people have that the best thing is going to win out in these kinds of environments is not what's going to happen. And, and so I think that it's, uh, it's really important that there be a way to assess what the competition is producing and discipline it by, by evidence. Uh, but competition can be ineffective and even do harm if the competitors are not doing anything different than what the existing actors are doing. They're simply coming in and competing for the business, but they're not innovating. They're not thinking outside uh, the, the box. And uh, if competitors don't have the, the right kind of uh, expertise and there isn't a way to understand what is working among the competitors and what should then be embraced at, to really make the, the public sector systems work better in a particular country. So there's a lot of challenges here, but I hope that you're getting from the material that I've just gone through that there's no golden rule. Whether you're, you need more competition or more collaboration depends very much on the environment in a particular case and a host of other characters. And underlying all this is political economy factors that shape what is possible because a lot of what happens in the scenarios that I was describing before have very little to do with technical issues and a lot to do with the incentives of various actors to either embrace reform um, or not. And then the last thing that is a big challenge is that it is hard to experiment with public sector reforms. You can't have, you, you can't for an indefinite period of time do a lot of experimentation with different things systems need to be run, you need to get things moving, and it's hard to evaluate some of these things because a lot of public sector reform uh, isn't directly about outputs, it's about getting systems in place that enable the delivery of better outputs by the, by the public sector. So what, what do we need to do to advance this? And as I said, this is something that I'm exploring now for some particular projects that I'm working on. Well, obviously, we need more research to better understand what are the situations under which collaboration versus competition um, might be more effective. But I think that in addition to that research, 
Because of the embedded incentives of the various actors who were working in this field, we also need some independent mechanisms to promote appropriate behavior. Uh, for example, a fund that is not managed by one of the, the actors who were involved in this process to create incentives to offer resources for more innovation. Or in cases where it's appropriate, to figure out ways to get uh, several development actors to work together where, be, where in the past they've been doing separate things that have not been helping the country to develop a, a consistent system. There are some models out there for these kinds of things, but uh, there's, there's a lot more work, I think, that could be done um, in, this, in this area. And obviously, we need to um, enhance the, the, the evidence um, and, and understand better uh, what works and was, what doesn't work. And again, I think that having um, entities that are more independent and that are developing standards that are not embedded in the self-interests of the various organizations is really important. Because a lot of evaluations that these uh, development agencies do are internal evaluations and you know, they hire people who are going to say the, the favorable things so that they can get another contract and so forth. So having some independence in this uh, is, I think, really important. And uh, there are some uh, examples of this. Some of you may have heard of the public expenditure and financial accountability standards, which are done for countries all over the, over the world. But these things are relatively narrow, and they only tell us a little bit about what we need to know to decide whether the development assistance is working or not. So I think this is really important. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that part of the problem is that, and you know, leaving the political economy aside, there's always going to be reasons why people do, uh, do good and bad things for, for particular reasons. But I think that making the recipient countries better consumers of aid is, is really important. How can they decide when they're, if there is competition, if they're being offered several things, what they should choose? Uh, so figuring out ways to, to coach them. There have been some initiatives in peer learning. Uh, uh, other developing countries who've gone through these things coming in and, and helping people who are helping to design public sector reform think about what to accept and reject from, uh, from different donors. So there's a lot, uh, uh, there isn't a lot of evidence on any of this. I'm telling you what I've found in trying to dive into something that I'm going to need to dive into for the next year or two in some of the projects that I've been working on. But I think that it is uh, a really important um, area in development assistance, which has received some superficial attention and needs to be uh, better understood. Uh, and I apologize because I haven't answered the question that I asked at the beginning, uh, whether collaboration or competition uh, is, is better. Uh, and the answer is, it depends. I don't know. But what I think we need to do by both by understanding the development assistance industry, but also how other uh, sectors uh, have solved this kind of problem, how we can unpack this and look for ways to use uh, development assistance in more collaborative or competitive ways to build uh, public service systems in developing countries. Thank you.